Can you admit that? What if you treated your neighbor the way you wish you'd be treated? Would the world be a better place? Maybe, but what if your neighbor treated you the way you wish you were treated? Now your world becomes a much better place. Right? That's Jesus. That's an unfathomable love of God. And you are His offspring. Now, do you need to matter in the world? Do you need something that matters? Do you need meaning? Start there. I'm the offspring of God. I'm a byproduct of the heart of my Father. My Father, think about, go back to our marriage. Go back to our spouse having children idea. That I look at my wife and I go, she's so wonderful. She's so beautiful. She's so intelligent that I'd like to see her reproduced on the earth. I wish there was a young man version of her and I wish there was a young lady version of her. And Maybe I have something to contribute to that. And then that's worth raising. And that's worth dying for. So what if that's the heart of the Father? And He says, I want to reproduce myself in a young man named Eduardo. (laughs) Because I want to see the world through Eduardo's eyes. And I want his background. And I want his passion. And I want his love. And I want his kindness. And I want his gentleness. And I want to feel his pain. And I want to know what makes him tick. And And I want to know what ticks him off. I don't want to feel the world through that kind of an emotion. I want to, and I don't want Eduardo to cheapen his life by trying to be happy or by just trying to have fun. I've got better things for him than that. Amen. See, that, that's, that's us. That's us in the heart of the Father. We are his offspring. He thought you would be worth reproducing himself in the world for. My God, that's incredible. You can look in the mirror and say, God thought I was worth it to reproduce a piece of heaven in me on the planet that I may have his eyes and his ears. And when he sees me, he thinks, look at Barry. There's a piece of Barry that is so precious and so awesome that I thought it worth putting him on the earth for. You're no accident. Don't listen to the lie of hell. I mean, when Paul looked at a bunch of non-believing, idol-worshiping, heathenistic Greeks and said, you are his offspring and in him you live and you move and you have your being. How dare you withhold God's grace from someone because they don't go to your church or they didn't pray your sinner's prayer. In him they live and they move and they have their being. Maybe they need to wake up to that. And if they woke up to that and they saw that a resurrected Jesus was a reality, then they wouldn't need you to tell them all the time that in Him they live and breathe and move. They'd have the identity of the Holy Spirit in their life. So the Holy Spirit could remind them, you, here's the reason you exist today, is because the Father loves you. And the Father wants you to go love each other and love Him in return. And He wants to shower you with affection. So if you hurt today, Daddy hurts today. And if you laugh today, Daddy laughs today. I don't know how many of you have caught it already. I posted a sermon on our website. Our Sunday morning posting today was from a conference in Alabama. The title of that sermon is called God Likes You. God, I had fun preaching that message because I had a revelation that God liked me and it meant more to me than any sermon I had ever heard in my life that God loved me. Because God loved me is blanket. God loves everybody. But God likes you. Oh, that's something special. Go listen to that message. I, don't, I want to re-preach it, but I'm not going to re-preach it. When you know your meaning, I'm, I'm trying to land the plane. When you know your meaning, you won't be self-absorbed. Your life will not be about you. It will be about those around you who matter to you and the things that give you meaning. And once that happens, we begin to recreate the garden on the earth. I truly believe that. At the time of the revolution, Thomas Paine said, we have the power to begin the world new again. That was a nice political revolutionary rallying cry, but I feel it's just as real for believers of the resurrected Jesus. We have it in our power to begin our world new again. When should we get started? So many of us are a little bit like Pharaoh 
when Moses comes before Pharaoh and Pharaoh goes, I'd like you to get rid of all of these frogs. And Moses says, glory over me. When do you want it done? You get to call the shots. And Pharaoh says, tomorrow. (laughs) I think we all, for some reason, think one more night with the frogs would be appropriate when we could have them gone now. Why will you wait till tomorrow to begin your world new again when the... When he who is emptied the tomb is alive and well in you right now. You have an opportunity to begin the world new again with the next person you meet. You can open your mouth and release the love of the Father into them. Or you can cuss them out up one side and down the other. The call is yours. If you like the kind of chaos that comes with cussing somebody out up one side and down the other. And you don't want to deal with that for the next few months or years of your life. Then by all means, take two steps into that hell. Or you could release somebody and set them free and forgive them of stuff that they did to you that they don't deserve forgiveness for. Welcome to grace where you didn't deserve forgiveness either. The longer you withhold forgiveness from people because they don't deserve it, the more you show yourself to be an upholder of the Mosaic Law. Because law says people must deserve their grace. And if you say to people, you must earn my love, then you are saying to people, I'm a legalist. So don't brag about going to a grace church if you can't forgive people in your life that are unforgivable. All you're doing is going to a church, but you've yet to really show yourself as part of her. The grace of God has created us for righteousness and good works. The righteousness is ours by faith in Jesus Christ. The good works come out of us, and they belong to us, but for the express and sole purpose of showing people what it would look like if God could recreate Himself on the earth. Jesus said, go out into the world and show men your good works, and they shall see your good works, and they shall glorify your Father which is in heaven. And that doesn't mean your Father way off on a distant planet. It means they shall glorify the governor and the king of the kingdom you reside in. The moment that they see your good works, they will realize they have just met an emissary from another kingdom john 13 and i don't want to ask you to turn there but in john 13 jesus gets down on his knees and he washes his disciples feet when you get home read the first few verses of john 13 because there's a remarkable moment where the bible says and jesus knew that all things had been committed unto his hands and when jesus knew who he was and where he was going he got down on his knees and he wrapped a towel around his waist notice the precursor to why He gets down on his knees. Jesus knew who he was, and he knew where he was going. And if you know who you are and you know where you're going, you would think Jesus would then go get on a white horse and grab a sword and start cutting Romans' heads off because he's about to be the victor Christ. But instead, the moment he knew who he was and where he was going, he got down on his knees. And he washed his disciples' feet because that's what happens in the kingdom when you start to realize your identity and you realize your meaning on the earth. You'll trade your title for a towel. Jesus lays the title down, picks the towel up, and washes the feet of people. It offends some of His disciples. They can't imagine that this is what the kingdom is going to look like. And yet, it's just another lesson from Jesus. Fellows, welcome to the kingdom. Here, we drop our titles. The world, you can have titles. They'll give you a bunch of them. and You can work your way up the ladder. Here, they don't mean much to the Father. The first shall be last. The last shall be first. That doesn't mean God has a jumbled up economy. It means that in the kingdom of God, things don't work the way they work in the things of the world because in the kingdom of God, they work by grace. They work by the favor of your father who loves you very much. And he loves you so much that just like you wiped your little baby's bottom and you lowered yourself and humbled yourself to do that, well, your father humbled himself in the form of a servant, became a man, and said, I'm going to show you how to love the world. And they're sometimes going to be unlovable. But so are you. (laughs) And I love you anyway. You rascal. How do you navigate yourself in the world? Find out what matters. Define what matters by meaning. Move forward with meaning in your eye. You're agents of change in the planet. You have it within your power to begin the world new again. Decatur, let's get started.